Heartbroken would be a massive understatement for this Raptors squad who had such a historic season. But head coach Maurice Moore says despite losing four seniors, the future of this program is bright. This year's Turkey Day game has become increasingly personal for head coach Frank Duffy, who has yet to defeat the Red Rovers as a head coach. But Duffy says he is dealing with the pressures of Thanksgiving the same way he expects his players to, by ignoring the noise. In preparation for tonight's game, the Trojans have been studying film relentlessly, and they've come to the conclusion that if they are going to win, they'll have to contain number two, Ava Ciola. The Spurs were on a six game winning streak. They made it seven tonight with the win over the Knicks. That's currently the longest active streak in the NBA. The reason for the Spurs recent success, well, it's undeniably been their defense. In fact, since the rodeo road trip, they've increased their defensive rating by 17 points. For the defensive menace, Derek White, he said that making stops late in the game was really important in today's matchup against the Hawks. But on the offensive, he actually scored 23 points, a pretty big number for Derek White. Still, he says he needs to continue to shoot with more confidence. First pitch is 7.05 p.m. It's the continuation of the Pigs' Salute to Veterans Week following last week's 4th of July celebrations. And, of course, our Service Electric crew will be bringing that game to you live here on Channel 2 and 502 HD. Now, we continue our baseball coverage. The DeSales Bulldogs hosted their youth baseball camp, the first one of the summer last week. The camp was for ages 7 to 12 and focused primarily on the basics of the game. I had the pleasure of actually attending the camp where kids from all around the Valley seemed to be having a blast despite last week's extreme heat. College baseball was in full swing this weekend, too. Big 12 powerhouses duked it out in Austin. Number 12, Texas took down number 11, Texas Tech, 2-1 in the series this weekend. Friday afternoon, the Longhorns battled for a 4-3 victory, starting the series off hot. Zach Zubia looked good at the plate, going one for two with an RBI while Ty Madden picked up the win. We are closing today's show out with a very special story close to my heart. Team Decker, an organization you may have heard about before on our show, is composed of Dr. Eugene Decker and his family. Team Decker dedicates a yearly effort to raising money for blood cancer research and is partnered with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Now March may be over, but the madness continues Saturday when Texas Tech takes on Michigan State in the NCAA semifinals. Recently, the Red Raiders head coach Chris Beard was named Coach of the Year, and now he leads his team to the school's first ever Final Four matchup. There were five lucky elementary schools involved with the Iron Pigs Read Across America campaign. And although Ferris and Fifi did undeniably steal the show, it was actually Iron Pig staff members who volunteered to read stories to the students. I remember when I was a kid, this was like one of my favorite uh, weeks in school. So it's super exciting to just kind of get us out in the uh, community. And again, with Ferris, the kids are going absolutely nuts for him. So that's exciting. And while reading was the primary focus of this event, the Iron Pig mascots also participated in some other shenanigans. I love to read, you know, obviously I talk for a living, so I love to read the books, but of course, you know, seeing the kids' reactions though when they see Ferris, uh, it warms the heart because um, just to see their, their smiles and to see their eyes light up, it's really a cool experience. And we hope to continue to visit schools and, you know, as not just for Read Across America Day, but if, you know, as much as we continue doing things we do with the Iron Pigs. Ferris and Fifi selected the books for this year's Read Across America event, and not surprisingly, all of them were baseball themed. We kind of want to show the importance of reading, also with baseball, um, America's favorite pastime. So it's an awesome way to kind of incorporate the two. Um, and they picked some pretty good books, I'll be honest with you. For the Service Electric Network, I'm Courtney DuPont. The Leah Valley Zoo likes to move it, move it, and now they are moving their mongoose lemurs to the zoo's first ever indoor and outdoor habitat. The new exhibit will begin construction shortly and is being named Habitat Madagascar, inspired by the Madagascar natives who will be occupying the space. We have actually had lemurs here at the zoo for quite some time. Um, and unfortunately, uh, late last year, or early last year, I guess late 2019, our older pair of lemurs passed away. And the opportunity to have a, a space that was both indoors and outdoors, it's different you know, than what we have going on here at the zoo currently. And um, we're excited about that. You know, We're excited about adding that 
year round space. Habitat Madagascar will actually be the first new exhibit that the Lehigh Valley Zoo has had dating back to 2017 when giraffes made their debut. In addition to that, curators are hoping that their young lemurs, Miko and Abby, will eventually breed, bringing baby lemurs to the valley as well. It was presented to us through another AZA institution um, about having a breeding pair of lemurs. And when we heard, you know, as soon as you hear that, the opportunity to breed um, and and, you know, not just cute baby lemurs, of course, but also, you know, the opportunity to be part of that conservation effort. We really jumped on that. For the Service Electric Network, I'm Courtney DuPont.